Hello, everybody. So my name is Martha Alter Hines with Living the One Light. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the off the chart, incredibly powerful full moon that we're having in Aquarius on a August 19th, 2024. And, you know, there are so many things that anybody could be talking about with this full moon. And I might I might feel called to make another video about it. I'm not sure yet, but um, what, what I'm really feeling called to talk about in this video is the role of some of the goddesses in the chart of this full moon. So I previously made a new moon in Leo video that was regarding the August 4th new moon that we just had. I'm recording this on actually August 5th. So that new moon was yesterday. Um, super powerful, beautiful new moon. And I talked in that video a lot about Regulus and about the role of Regulus in, in the that new moon plus this upcoming full moon. Go back and listen to the new moon video if you feel called to hear more about that. I show you in the sky where the new and full, full moons are going to be and how, and oh, also I talk, sorry, I talk about this a lot also in my Mercury retrograde video. Um, I'll show you in the sky also the the dance of Mercury with Regulus. So Regulus is a big player right now in all kinds of ways. And um, I'll weave that in a little bit into this video, but go back to those videos if you want to hear more about some of my thoughts about Regulus. I would also highly recommend uh, connecting with Kaylin Castell's videos recently about Regulus and just in general, um, if you want to hear more about Regulus. But um but today, what I really want to drop into is some of the goddesses, in particular, some goddess asteroids that are pretty highlighted and um, and that I think bring a kind of, help us get perspective. <laughs> Let me put it like that, because as we know, as we can see in the world, and maybe as you're feeling in your own life, um, there's there's a lot likely to be coming up during this time and that I've talked about some previous videos uh, you know we have for example right now the square the nodes of the moon are currently squaring this whole group of beings in capricorn and I talk about that much more much more in lots of other previous videos as well but um you know that grouping I just really feel as this imperative that it's like inevitable that we need to be releasing this these karmic layers as we're as we as we're moving into um something you could call you know becoming rebecoming homo luminous ones even or just creating the new earth whatever words you want to put to it that change is is coming is happening we're here we're in this time of remembering all of that's true it's very 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 the spirit world just absolutely is adamant that that's true you know in my praying at least and and at the same time part of the process of that is that we have lived this lifetime and many other lifetimes of that have on this planet that have really included a lot of trauma and so our bodies our earth bodies and our um our energy bodies our emotional bodies our etheric bodies it's 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 needed that we give it time and space to to process to to transmute to let go so we handle it carefully and we handle it um well with care <laughs> right that we don't do the spiritual bypassing thing we don't just all of a sudden declare that we have no karma or whatever whatever that is um and and that we really honor whatever process our bodies have so so yeah so there, there might be things coming up that are just ready to let go and transmute in all different kinds of ways and and that's great and, and i think it's really important to then have have ways that we can then look <laughs> like to have little reminders like okay yeah that's feeling very very intense or whatever it is you know difficult or there's grief or there's it might be just ecstasy. It might be totally happy. I don't want to project that onto anybody, onto you. But but if there are difficult things, which I think there are for a lot of people, then I think it's really helpful to have um, some little lights, you know, that help us get 
better perspective on and just come back to the knowing that we already have of okay here's what's really going on um so yeah so let me show you some of those these goddesses our friends in the sky <laughs> our friends who are ourselves really um all right here we go so here is the chart of the full moon it's going to be on August 19th, 2024, 27 degrees and 15 minutes of Aquarius with the sun at 27 degrees, 15 minutes of Leo. Um, as I've talked about in the new moon video, and I think also I talked about it in the Mercury retrograde video, uh, Mercury, who's going retrograde at this time still, will be conjunct the sun along with, with Vesta. And I talk a lot more about Vesta in a video I did with Chris Skidmore, which I highly recommend because Vesta is a huge player this month as well. We talk a lot about the Vesta story and the connection to Cinderella. And Chris has a lot of really, really beautiful insights in that video. So highly recommend going back to that if you want. And here is Regulus, which uh, for most of us, when we were born, Regulus was technically at 20, 29 degrees of Leo. But now, you know, the, our perspective of the stars shifts one degree every 72 years. So at, by now, um, Regulus has shifted to zero degrees of Virgo. But you can see Mercury, the sun, Vesta, all sitting here with Regulus. So the first of the goddesses, of course, who I would say are really supporting us is Vesta. And again, go back to the video with Chris if you want to hear more more in depth, way more in depth conversation about this. But Vesta, just on a basic level, helps us to come back to the hearth, the inner hearth, and our heart, especially Vesta in Leo, very much about coming back to our heart and staying grounded in our own sovereign temple being. Um, and then, fascinatingly. As I've talked about previously, um, and I think probably lots of people are going to be talking about, Uranus is going to be squaring the moon and the sun on this full moon, which is part of one of the many, many, many reasons why this full moon is so unbelievably powerful, so unbelievably powerful. <laughs> and with a full moon in Aquarius squared by Uranus, I mean just that yeah i mean there absolutely could be you know quote unquote shocks and surprises yes or there could be and with mercury there retrograde squaring this <laughs> well it's like absolutely there could be things coming out of the closet that are like like game changer kind of like whoa you know kind of things but the again just to say this again just on a basic level uranian energy aquarian energy like that is 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 the the highest manifestation of that the real ultimate purpose of that is to be bringing us back into radical alignment with ourselves as the divine so i think that's a good thing to have in mind um but the thing i want to bring in with the goddesses with this is that actually at the time of this full moon also Pallas athena and Sappho, but I'm going to focus a little bit more on Pallas Athena, is also going to be opposite Uranus. So it's it's actually, any if you include these goddess asteroids, it's actually a grand cross of um, the sun and the moon. Uh, of course, also there with Mercury and Vesta with the sun, Uranus squaring all of that. And Pallas Athena and Sappho there, uh, you know, cr completing this grand square. Uh, Grand Cross. So, Pallas Athena. Um, Athena is the goddess who sprang from Zeus's head. So she was fully formed and fully armored, actually, when she was born out of Zeus's head. And she is, among many other things, associated with... I, I, I When I feel into her, I really... I really feel and... Um, I feel I associate her with clarity of vision, like incredible 
clear vision of the whole like she's she's a goddess of war but not in the sense of fighting she's a goddess of strategy and seeing the whole battlefield and of of really not in service of destruction it's like it's this it's the sense of and and uranus actually has a very similar quality which is fascinating here with this whole configuration so Pallas athena opposite uranus squaring the sun and the moon i mean to me it's like the sense of okay let's step way way back for a second guys <laughs> like like yeah 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 like it, i get it there's all this change and things are happening maybe that are just like whoa you know um like just to throw in that same this day of the full moon happens to be the D democratic national convention in the united states and that's a that's probably going to be a pretty big day period <laughs> just period <laughs> um in the united states and so so it's like if things were to you know take shape in a certain way that was not expected or that was kind of a big deal um i feel the energy of of palace athena and i'll bring in sappho in a second but palace athena is like okay hey hey guys hey guys <laughs> This might look chaotic. This might look X, Y, Z, but um, let's take a step back. Let's 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 really get the whole bird's eye view, like the eagle perch. What's really going on here? Let's remember the point. Like, let's not get wrapped up in the quote unquote battle. Let's let's really step back and and see the whole perspective. Um, Sappho, I just I'll just bring in Sappho briefly. I love Sappho. So Sappho is um, associated with, I associate her with uh, love of women, love of the feminine and the feminine's love of the feminine. So Sappho definitely can be associated with, with uh, you know, feminine, feminine sexual relationships, definitely, but not necessarily. I, I've talked about this before. I see Sappho for sure, very prominent in people's charts who who do have relationships, you know, women who have relationships with women, for sure. Um, but I also see Sappho really prominent in charts of people who advocate for women or who are artists and there's some component of the feminine being very alive in their art or their writing or their poetry or whatever it is, they do some, something in their life. That's very, very strongly supportive of the feminine or of women. Um, and again, if I think of, you know, the, the democratic national convention and what is going on and politically in the United States at this moment, um, there's a lot of advocacy and support of the feminine happening <laughs> and the feminine you know rising in a certain sense so I, I, yeah i won't go into that but i i do i do see that and go hmm that's very interesting <laughs> that happens to be going on there uh on this full moon so i don't know i don't know what that will mean i don't know i don't know but it just 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 to throw it in that that is there um and then the one other, no, two other, there are two other goddesses I want to bring in. But another one that I, I haven't talked about at all in a while um, is, that's super key here, I feel, is Estrella. So Estrella is right here, conjunct Venus on this full moon opposite Saturn and and another gigantic thing that I've talked about in other videos on this day of the full moon, <laughs> a really, really, really big deal. <laughs> in addition to Uranus squaring the sun and the moon is that the same day of this full moon is also going to be the first of three Jupiter Saturn squares. So the first is going to be on the day of this full moon, August 19th, 2024. The second one is going to be on December 24th, 2024. And then the third one will be on June 15th, 2025 next year. So um, 
So that Jupiter Uranus, sorry, Jupiter Saturn square is a whole topic in and of itself. And maybe we'll just do a whole video on that at some point. And then I don't, we'll see, <laughs> see, um, but yeah, but, but I just want to point out that it's not only Saturn squaring Jupiter. What's actually also going on here is that at the time, at this time, Mars will have just passed its conjunction with Jupiter, and it will have just passed its exact square to Saturn. So Jupiter and Mars will now be in a new phase conjunction with Mars starting to move away from Jupiter. So, so Mars will be, will have just passed where it met with Jupiter, and now it's going to be starting a whole new cycle with Jupiter. Um, but it's still it's still it's still very close to Jupiter, and it's still really basically conjunct Jupiter, right? And still basically squaring Saturn. But take a look at who else it's squaring. So Jupiter and Mars together are squaring Saturn, and they're squaring Venus and Estrella. So I'll come back to Estrella in one second, just to say, so Mars squaring. Venus, Sappho opposite Uranus. I mean, absolutely. I would say this is a time when the feminine and the masculine might really be trying to speak to each other. Or there, let me put it another way: this energy could be could be very volatile with regard to the relationship between the feminine and the masculine, trying to, trying to work it out in a sense on the ultimate level, trying to work it out. But there could be a sense of like, if people are not operating in a very conscious way, it could come out as very, very, very difficult. <laughs> so, um, but I think that the, the ultimate impulse here is to be trying, we're trying to work this out. We're trying to work out this whole coming back to the one, which is what we are, right? And um, and we will. Like we're we're getting there. We already are there. We are we are source. We we are that. Uh, but squares, you know, of course they can sometimes bring this. Like we're trying to figure out how to do this, and it's contentious or something. But squares also can be incredibly, incredibly productive. So this, so if we are operating from a more conscious place, this could be in such a productive time in terms of really hearing each other, really being like, okay, I, I experience it like this and you experience it like that. Okay. Let's, let's really work this out. Like let's really work with this, right? That's a super beautiful potential here. So I just I just think that's important to keep that in mind because especially with it squaring also Saturn um, and Nessus, there's this element of we're trying to work this out and there's karmic patterns that we're working with big time, as we know. <laughs> um, and Saturn ruling this whole Capricorn group that's squaring the nodes. I mean, it just goes on and on. But okay, now back to, back to Estrella. I lost that little train of thought. I'm coming back here. So Estrella, Estrella is a reminder of, again, similar to how Pallas Athena helps us come back to the big picture, the eagle perch. Estrella is the goddess um, who, she was the main, I'm sorry, she was the last goddess in the to to the last goddess to leave the earth. So in the time of the golden age, you know, as the story goes, in the time of the golden age, the gods and the goddesses lived together on the earth. And as the golden age started to wane and humans started becoming violent and all of that, the gods and goddesses started getting fed up and they left. They left the earth. But Estrella was really committed to helping the humans. So she stayed until it got so bad. And even she said, all right, I'm out of here. I can't do this. <laughs> so, and she said, you know, I'll be back, but 
No, not right now. So she left and she became the constellation of Virgo. Um, but then the story continues that when Estrella returns to the earth, uh, that will be, that will bring the golden age again. Okay. So we're now in this time of remembering. So the way I think of Estrella really ultimately is she's us. Like we are here, we are her and we are, um, we are the bridges of, of earth and light and all of it. And, and yeah, so I see her in this T square conjunct Venus opposite Saturn and Nessus and squared squaring um Mars and Jupiter I, I I feel her energy is this little tap like this little touch that's like yeah remember the point here remember right we're <laughs> we're here to we're here to be holding space like we're not here to get caught up in this in a fight of like feminine and masculine or women and men or whatever or like one trying to up the other that's that's not the point here that's not the point the point we're all here we're all in this together we are each in our own unique and perfect ways we are we are beings of light and earth as one estrella star right we are we are beings of light and earth as one and that's the point of all that we're doing like when there's if if karmic things come arise that are like there's hurt there or things that need to be cleared the point is to clear them the point is not to to get stuck right not to just like fight and make it worse the point is be with the feelings do what the body needs do do the kind of transforming that is needing to happen and keep your eye on the prize <laughs> keep your eye on the prize that we are ultimate we are here for that on that ultimate level we are here for the healing the transforming the returning to the reality that we are source and earth and light and love as one period the end <laughs> um and then the final goddess i'll just throw in there i could go on and on and on because there's so many wonderful ones uh but i'll just throw in that at this time series which is in the grouping of the capricorn beings here by then series will be exactly squaring the nodes of the moon and series will go direct squaring the nodes of the moon just a few days after this full moon so um so that series energy is also really 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 strong in this chart and or this time and <clears throat> um and i feel series there's so many things about series but one thing that definitely calls to me about that is is the the role of grief in this whole process that again our energy bodies our emotional bodies maybe need to cry sometimes processing the trauma that has happened the you know the things that are being transmuted from the past karmic stuff and the current the current trauma is happening um sometimes sometimes grief has a really necessary role and i would say sacred anger has a has a important role sometimes um series definitely has that component and unconditional love and love for ourselves powerful passionate unconditional love for our who the people you know the beings that we love but also for ourselves um so to hold us to hold our series i just basically bottom line feel as a reminder to really hold ourselves let ourselves um be aware of what we personally need and to honor that to really deeply honor that to honor our bodies um to honor the the tenderness and the love that we need like it's it's a real thing it's not it's not a luxury it's actually a real need <laughs> so it's really really a need um yeah Okay. Um, and, and I'll just, and actually I'll throw in one more cause I'm going, there's something, there's some role that Hygieia is playing and it's calling me and I'm going, Oh yeah. Hygieia and Ceres are trining each other. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. So Hygieia again, Hygieia in, in Taurus in particular, um, it, it is 
the reminder of the wisdom of our bodies and um yeah so that's that's strongly there too all right i think that sums up everything i feel called to say so um so bottom line i mean my takeaway at least you tell me your takeaways i would love 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 to hear about it but my takeaway essentially is this time absolutely could be filled with all kinds of things that you know feel chaotic and destabilizing and all of that um and let's keep our eye on the prize <laughs> let's let's also you know be in that eagle's perch um let's honor our own body our own body not knowing our own inner hearth our own hearts um the tender love that we need to navigate this time to heal you know if we need quiet if we need time alone if we need a hug if we need um some really nurturing food water you know if we need to just take care of ourselves and let ourselves be taken care of that that also could be you know just just to honor 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 our own beings and honor each other too of course um and be very discerning about what is mine to do and what is not mine to do that's something i talk about in the mercury retrograde video also but that definitely could be a big theme here because again you know it's when the world starts to look chaotic or turbulent or whatever it is it can be easy to feel like we need to take care of it all <laughs> probably not realistic and almost certainly not actually ours to do so to be able to get really clear on what is mine to do um i think is going to be key always is key but yeah all right and so i'll just end by saying um one major support if you haven't signed up yet definitely join the the wholeness way series so it's available now um here on my youtube channel and it's available for free as a teachable on my teachable site as a free course so love for you to join any way you feel called if you feel called i have just recorded the opening video for week four so there's already three weeks that are available um just a few minutes ago i recorded the opening video for week four i'm going to be putting up week four sometime in the next few days i haven't decided exactly which day yet because i need i'm going to be recording the other days as well and to time it with other things but um but the week four is uh the theme is uh rebecoming ourselves as homo luminous ones so it's uh i think it's going to be really fascinating <laughs> and beautiful and yeah i would love to have you be a part of that if it calls to you and and i, I hope that it'll be really supportive throughout this whole time because again i think all of it the whole series the point is to really be a support to um yeah, to come back to that remembering of ourselves as the wholeness that we are and to to get that e eagle eagle eye perch, uh, eagle eagle's perch view of what is mine to do and what is not mine to do, right? What's yours to do? What's not yours to do on that soul level? Um, who is there as a support for you you're, to be able to find your spirit team? Um, there's, those are all components of the, the Wholeness Way series. And um yeah, so in just various ways, I hope it can be a support for you if it calls to you entirely free, again, here on the YouTube channel or through the free course on my Teachable site. And the link is here with this video. So thank you. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, I would love for you to subscribe. Um, I want to say thank you also. Some of you have been joining the membership on my YouTube channel. Um, I have a membership, like a, a regular membership through my teachable site, which um, you're also welcome to join. 
uh, that one involves a monthly gathering that's live and recorded. But here on my YouTube channel, you can join my membership for just two to, as little as $2 a month. And um, even $2 a month, honestly, it it's like a just a little boost of like, <laughs> helps me just feel like, okay, yeah, people really value this and, and want this. And, um, and it, and it even little bits add up, you know, to support me and my kids. And so if, if that calls to you, uh, thank you. And thank you to those of you who have already been joining. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's very heartwarming for me. Great. Um, yeah. And in the month of August, I, I'm taking off some time, but but I have some time available for one-on-one -on -one sessions toward the second half of the month, and and you know beyond that into September, etc. Um, and there's an upcoming workshop with Melanie Reinhardt on September third, which I'll put the link for here. I'm also going to be doing a workshop in September for on the eclipses, which I haven't. It's not ready yet to sign up for, but just so you know, that's coming. Um, in October, there's going to be a workshop with Kelly Hunter on the Kuiper Belt. And so that's coming. Um, yeah, I think those are the big things right this second. More to come. <laughs> Lots more to come. All right. Thank you so, so much. And um, yeah, share here cheer each other on and I will see you very soon.